though, um, further to the discussion we're having on the forum about the requirement to have a low loss header when having um, two circuits with different temperatures. This has come from some design guide I've found on the internet that states that whenever there is two circuits running at different temperatures, you must fit a low loss header if it's on a valent boiler. And I don't quite agree with it. Um, however, it is actually not bad advice if you're doing the whole design process reasonably well. And um, so I've drawn up a couple of examples to demonstrate this. Now, you've got to bear in mind that there's a maximum flow rate for most boilers and its approximation is the full output of the boiler at delta T20. Now, it's not actually factual, but it's a good guide. So if you've got a 37 kilowatt boiler, um, you can use the mass flow rate calculation or the um, volumetric flow rate calculation to work out what the maximum flow rate for that boiler should be approximately. And in case of delta T20, which is the usual design requirement for a boiler, uh, you simply divide the kilowatts by 84 to get the liters per second flow rate. Um, so an example that uh, brought this to our interest, it was a 37 kilowatt boiler and the maximum flow rate expected from that boiler would be about 0.44 liters per second. It's worth going to manufacturer's literature because for some boilers actually you can exceed this. We've got to remember if you do exceed it, you're going to reduce the delta T uh, across the boiler and um, you're going to reduce the efficiency of the boiler. So really we want to try and hit this 20 degree um, differential. So this is, this is a good guide, but not a rule. Uh, the rule will be stated by the manufacturer. But anyway, so, in this example, this is the system I've come across. It's got a 37 kilowatt boiler, uh, no load loss header. It's got an underfloor heating manifold and it's got a radiator circuit. And I don't know what the loads are for it, but I've assumed some loads for this example. So for the example that I'm working on, I've assumed the boiler is 37 kilowatts, that the downstairs underfloor is 10 and the upstairs radiators are eight kilowatts. And it's, it's purely, um, uh, for demonstration purposes. It's not based on any kind of accurate guesswork at all. Really. You just pluck these out of the sky to, to make a point. Then I've done another scenario where we've got an 18 kilowatt boiler. And to be fair, I don't actually know if Valent make an 18 kilowatt boiler, but I've chosen one. And I've designed this with a six kilowatt underfloor heating system and a six kilowatt radiator system. So here we've got a total of 12 kilowatts. We're supplying with an 18 kilowatt boiler. Um, this one here, we've got a total of 18 kilowatts and we're supplying it with a 37 kilowatt boiler. <coughs> I would argue that if I had a load of 18 kilowatts, I would supply it with an 18 kilowatt boiler, not a 37 kilowatt boiler. Either way, um, so here's my workings. So the boiler at delta T20 on 18 kilowatts requires 0.214 liters per second. 37 kilowatts requires 0.440 liters per second. Uh, underfloor heating, six kilowatt circuit requires 0.204 liters per second, 10 kilowatts 0.340 liters per second. And radiators at six kilowatts and delta T20. So uh, this one, delta T20C, um, requires 0.071 liters per second. This one at eight requires 0.094. So the total flow of the two circuits for this um, 18 kilowatt boiler is 0.275 liters per second. The maximum flow for the boiler is 0.214. And therefore we require a low loss header. The flow rate of the two circuits exceeds the flow rate of the boiler and therefore the low loss header is required. That doesn't follow uh, any design criteria I've read from Wiesmann although it's based loosely on something that is in the Wiesman design guide um, and it doesn't follow the advice that I've seen from Valent either. Um, that's simply just using some uh, engineering logic. And the rules that are pl plastered in the, in the um, design guide seem to be more rule of thumb rather than uh, this by involved. I think the rule of thumb simply just to make it easy and they spur, spur on the safe side. So you would end up specifying a low loss header more often using the design criteria they give us than if you do this calculation. 
For the 37 kilowatt boiler, we've now got a grossly oversized boiler, so we've got a lot of flow rate available, 0 0.440. But look, even with only 18 kilowatts of load, uh, 10 kilowatts of which is the underfloor heating, look at the flow rate here. The total flow rate, 0.435 litres per second, it only just allows us to not use a low loss header. Uh, but this boiler is grossly oversized. It, it, it's incompetent design to use a 37 kilowatt boiler to deliver 18 kilowatts. Um, you know, and I know ignoring the cylinder sizing, but unless this was a combination boiler, there'd be no justification for this 37 kilowatt figure. Um, certainly in the house that required 18 kilowatts, I would argue that a combination boiler was likely to be very unsuitable. Um, and then we should be looking at hot water cylinder for a property of that size. But here, in this example, we do not need a low loss header um, because the flow rate from the boiler is capable of delivering the flow rate that we want for the, uh, for the system. And um, although there, there would be some balancing issues with this, to be fair, it's a lot easier to do it with a low loss header. I would still put a low loss header in on this one um, anyway. This one here definitely needs a low loss header. And in fact, the smaller the boiler, the more likely it is that you'll need a low loss header. So I don't know how clear that was, but um, I hope it helps.